This was definitely my best performance at Daytona in my entire life. I have never been competitive in this track and never put the hours to endurance events like the best drivers do, but with the bit of practice that I've been putting this week, I'm at least at my best. Welcome to my Race Highlights YouTube series. Here you'll witness my best racing moments and learn about racecraft and driving technique. In this race, I found myself competing with Lucas Blakely, Formula 1 Esports World Champion. I decided to start the race at the back of the pack to practice some racecraft and fuel saving. And this is a 45 minute race in preparation for the 24 hours of Daytona in racing that happens in a few days. And I will race with Tony Canaan and his team's Texaco Esports. On the first corner you can already see how everyone ahead is checking up a little bit and I ended up carrying a little bit too much speed. My solution to avoid crashing was to get to the inside and I gained the position in the process. After that the pink car is defending so I decided to take the safe route and save some fuel to play the long game. In racing, we save fuel using the clutch and then brake a little bit later to compensate the lower approach speed. With this we can save more than a full lap of fuel so we decrease the time needed in the pits and gain an advantage at the end of the race. The slipstream in this class is insane. Within around a second and a half behind another car, you can gain as much as 15 km per hour at the end of the straight, and this helps holding the pack together. This means you can stay with the car ahead even if you are around a second a lap slower in the corners. Here we can still see P1, so as long as nothing terrible happens, we'll be able to gain some positions and stay with the guys ahead. I feel I'm clearly faster than this pink guy ahead, so I'm gonna try to pass him, but he defends a little bit and I end up having to be a little bit more aggressive to claim position because I really don't want to lose the guys ahead in the pack. Here you can see him clearly getting a defensive line, so I plan to get a better exit and pass him at the hairpin. But I don't want him to defend again, so I'm gonna kind of pretend I'm not passing and then do the move at the last second. A little bit sketchy, but it worked. The race kept going smoothly without too much drama for a few laps. The fast guys ahead are pulling everyone else with the draft, and I used this time to just save as much fuel as I could before we got into this lower class traffic jam. Although I was driving quite safe, I would definitely use opportunities like this one to gain some positions and reach the guys ahead. I was able to pass the green car after they had contact, but the black car changed lanes fast enough so I could not pass him too. As you can see, I'm just sticking behind the guys ahead and whenever I have any sort of small opportunity, I climb one position. This is a very long race, so if I keep doing that patiently, I'll catch the guys ahead eventually. All that, of course, while saving fuel, right? I was there at P5 for some good laps, and I just kept playing the long game, saving fuel and waiting. Eventually I got an opportunity, but this happened. We're now approaching traffic, and this is the opportunity to gain some more positions when people are off the line. I saw the gap and went for it, but the red car just closed the door after and I had to back off. I'll be honest, this kind of upset me a little bit, so I'm kind of gonna be more aggressive with him until I pass him. I got really unlucky with the traffic though. These guys passed the slower class in the straight, but I actually catching these guys in the corners, so I lost a lot of time and I had to work hard to regain that. I finally caught them after around 6 laps, so I could go back to saving, and of course avoiding traffic. This is a funny one. I decided to pass this guy on the inside, and to gain track position under braking, you kind of release your brakes a little bit to carry a little bit more speed, which of course, if you do too much, you will not be able to do the corner. We were both fighting hard to carried that extra speed into the corner and we both lost it. The difference though is that I was on the inside where there's a lot more grip because of the camber and he was on the outside off camber. So I ended up gaining the position. We're now heading into the pits and I'm gonna be able to put a little bit less fuel than the guys. I almost killed my entry speed and got a black flag but I got away with it. I didn't really get an advantage in the pits because they were also saving very well the fuel so I would have to fight until the end anyways. At this point, it's kind of worthless to be in P1 because it's so easy to just pass when you're P2 and you have to be really strategic and do your rehearsal for what you're gonna do in the last lap to win the race. At this point, I had a side-by-side -side moment there with Lucas and I decided to just let him go because he had the inside. It was gonna be ugly if we crashed inside the pit lane. With 13 minutes to go, it's about planning the last laps now. He started doing some mistakes and destroy his tires, so I'm quite confident that I'm gonna have a better car at the end of the race. At this point right now, being P1 means nothing though. It just takes one straight for us to start swapping positions again. 
My goal right now is to stay P2 so I can get a run at the end of the race. But as you can see, with the draft, even P3 can pass easily, so I have to do something to defend my P2 at least. I'll take the inside here and try to outrun him on the braking. From now on until the end of the race, we're all gonna be rehearsing our moves thinking about the last lap. This definitely does heat up the race a little bit. And to complicate things a little bit, now P4 and 5 are also with us. Every move has to be perfect right now because if I lose track position, I'm not gonna have enough time to recover it. Now, this was one of the best last second decisions I've done in this race. Someone was getting out of the pits and I saw an opportunity to dive into that hairpin and gain the track position that would become super important because of the traffic that we have ahead. It was quite sketchy, but it made me gain two positions in the closing laps of the race. As I was saving a lot of my tires, I thought I could have an opportunity to actually break the draft if P2 and 3 started fighting. So I went for the run here and figured out they started fighting and tried to drive as fast as I could to see if I could break the draft. One lap later, I got lucky with traffic and passed some slower class on the straight while they caught them in the corners. This is my chance to break the draft and guarantee the victory without too much drama in the end. I was happily 2.2 seconds ahead and free of draft, but then I got unlucky with traffic. Slowing down that much in the bus stop is basically worth all the time I gained. Although Lucas was in the draft range again, I was able to still open up the gap just by nailing the corners of the infield. It looked like I had much better tires than him because I was really saving the tires for a long time during the race. So in the last lap, it all felt easy. I was more than two seconds ahead, but then something happened and I was actually very lucky because I completely forgot to check my fuel. And I had put a little bit less and I was planning to save a little bit more to be able to finish the race. But because I was focusing so much on the fight for P1 and rehearsing in my head the last moves for the last lap, I completely forgot to save fuel. <laughs> oh my god, I finished with 0, 0.0. I completely forgot to look at the fuel. <laughs> Good race, guys.